Atomic Powered City. It's late night with the... And now, a man who doesn't do any show that's not a big show, Dave. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. Thank you so much. Hi. How are you? Thank you. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a magic night. It's a Friday night. And I don't often say this, and uh, I'm going to say it tonight, and I hope I don't get things off on the wrong foot. But frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I've never felt lovelier. Boy, a strange thing happened to me today. I'm having a lunch in my favorite Midtown restaurant. And I thought that this was at the least disconcerting. And in all honesty, it frankly broke my spirit. I'm enjoying whatever I was eating. And in the middle of my meal, the chef comes bursting out of the kitchen. And he screams this as loudly as he can. Does anybody here have a Band-Aid and some cough drops? I just... Thank you very much. Band-Aid and some cough drops. For the, uh, let's turn now to the world of sports. For the first time in the history of the NFL, the Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowl now, will be played on ESPN instead of ABC, NBC, or CBS. So it's the first time it'll be on cable instead of a network. And it's going to be really unusual. It's going to be odd, isn't it? Don't you think not watching it on cable instead of not watching it on a network? I... <laughs> I've never felt lovelier. And, and you know what that means, don't you? That means we pass the savings on to you. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, I you, don't know. you've never felt lovelier, A, uh -huh. and B, yeah. we pass the That's savings right. on to you. That's right. And you know why I say that, Paul? Why is that? Because I'm really drunk tonight. Yeah. <laughs> You should, that's not something you should joke about because uh, I, I don't drink. I used to drink years ago. Boy, did I. I don't, I don't drink anymore now. But I really did for a long time. Really used to enjoy drinking. <laughs> Just ask my liver. That was a show, wasn't it, Paul? That, there was uh, a show. Didn't Mr. Wizard do that for a while on Nickelodeon? <laughs> Just ask my liver. That was a show. Well, Mickey Mantle is opening a brand new restaurant here in New York City. I thought this was kind of ugly. George Steinbrenner goes by yesterday and fires a couple of busboys. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> it's, it's like buyers from Thai City or something are here. <laughs> what? Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, today was a sad day for the frozen food industry. All the details are apparently not yet in, but here's what we have so far. Uh, down in Miami, Mrs. Paul was arrested and charged with killing a dock worker. <laughs> Mrs. Paul. Paul. Yeah, the, you know, Mrs. Uh, Paul. Mrs. Paul's uh, frozen fish, fish stuff. sticks. Yeah, right. Killed a dock worker. Apparently killed a... Killed we a don't dock. know if the dock worker was stabbed or bludgeoned, but they're pretty sure she did it. Thank you. Kids, kids, thank you so much for selecting us for your evening's enjoyment. What a show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Say hello to some cats for me, everybody. Honor of Buster Poindexter, I want to add that. Congratulations. Especially in his honor. Looking forward. Nice to see you guys again. Thank you for being you here. You know, sometimes you used to see the uh, Carson show, and when, like if a Sinatra would be on or a, or a Barbara Streisand, and they would mm -hmm. have strings, special strings, right. augmenting the band. And we have augmented the band. For Buster Poindexter, I want to announce Thank that. You very Thank much. you very much. Very thoughtful of you, and we're looking forward to your little tune later. Did I mention we have augmented the band uh, yeah, yeah, in I honor think you of uh, it out. Buster Poindexter? You pointed it out and then pointed it out again. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What, what kind of time? What are you doing this weekend? I got a big weekend plan. What are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm just cooling out. What are you doing? Big I blue fishing off Montauk. Ooh, yeah. really? Yeah. 
right after. What are you doing, chartering a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we get out there at 3 in the morning, cutting bait, and then we're out. We go like uh, 40 miles off the coast, and we're out there all day. Spend the whole weekend yeah, out that's there. Great. Sleep out there. Yeah, anyway? we sleep out there, eat nothing but cheese sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Feels <laughs> good. What's as the many head? as we can get. We go How are the heads out Several there loaves of Wonder Bread. What? What's the head like on a, on a boat like that? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the, the, the facility. Yeah. Hell, don't ask, don't ask me. Um, I feel, oh, we've got to do the top ten, then we'll get to our mail, don't we? What? From the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska, top ten things our receptionists say every day. The kids who answer our phone daily, eight hours a day, five days a week up there on the 14th floor. Top ten things our receptionists say every day. Have you seen, by the way, the, the day show how fat Bryant is getting? <laughs> you, were, you were mentioning that the other day. You know, I heard there's a lot of people who work on this crew and they also work on the Today Show crew, and they tell me that it's standard procedure because he consumes so many donuts during the show that when they cue him that he's coming back on camera, they always have to do this, Bryant. <laughs> Pass the savings on to you. Here we go. Top 10 things our receptionists say every day. Here we go, number 10. No, Tom Snyder is not here. Number nine. You're a bunch of guys in a college dorm. Let me give you Dave's home phone number. Number eight, hello, Bill Wendell's Amway headquarters. Number seven. Thank you, Mr. President, but no one here played in the Super Bowl. <laughs> number six, if you wish to sue Mr. Letterman, I can give you the 800 number. <laughs> number five. Number five, nice language, Mr. Gumbel. Number four. I'm sorry, we're all out of transcripts of the Bedwetter Show. Number three. No, I only lead the band during the show. I'm on the phones during the day. Number two. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, well, he probably thinks you're an unfunny jerk, too. And number one, yes, Mr. Donahue, Marlo's up here, but she doesn't want to talk to you. It should be a lot of fun. Pat Sajak will be here in a, in, in a moment, and uh, the young man from the Washington Redskins and uh, Buster Poindexter. But first, let's turn our attention to the viewer mail that's piled up over the last week. Letter number one, dear Dave. What would happen if you broke your leg? Dave Brock, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, this is an excellent question. You know, it's uh, actually never uh, happened on the show. I've never broken a bone on the show, but I, yeah, I wonder what it would be like if I broke. I tell you what, let me just try and break my leg tonight. And get my, see if I can't just get it up. Ooh, well, I'm a little stiff. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. This ain't my leg. Um, here we go. They just twist it like that. Ah. Okay. All right. All right, now just easy, just easy. Okay. All right, let me just give it one hard shot here. Ooh. Oh, it's just, it's all right. It's, it's just throbbing a little, that's all. Letter number two. Uh, dear Dave, uh, now we need your help. We have never missed one of your shows, really, but you have never acknowledged us. Some friend, please show America your favorite friends. You owe us one. Your favorite friends, Andrew and Mike Pace, a hot Atlanta, Tucker, Georgia. Oh, there's a picture. Oh, there they are. Gee, it is funny that uh, a couple of guys that look like you uh, would be at home every night of the week for six years. Loons, Paul. <laughs> loons. That's just <it's> loons. <laughs> I'll say it's loons. <laughs> Letter number three. Dear Dave, Aunt B's freezer won't freeze. Why doesn't your show have exciting plot lines like this? Oh, I see. It's the little plot scenario synopsis there from, from the TV guide. Well, I, I don't know. This comes to us from Wayne Tomlinson, Savannah, Georgia. I don't know, Wayne. I, I think uh, we have some pretty exciting plots coming up. Let me uh, let's take a look at a listing for next week here in the TV Guide. Oh, yeah, right up here in the upper left-hand corner. See if uh, this doesn't excite you, the home viewer. There it is, uh, 12.30, late night with David Letterman. Dave thinks the studio might be too hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, that was a coot. That was not a loon. A coot? That was a coot, yes. That I've never heard of. No. A coot. It was not a loon, it was a coot. Dear Dave, letter number four begins, Flunky sucks. <laughs> Joel Stein, Edison, New Jersey. Well, uh... You know, Joel, usually when we receive uh, vitriolic attacks like this one, we offer the accepted party, the affected party, I'm sorry, the affected party, a chance to uh, rebut. Uh, Flunky, are you here? Here's Flunky, the late night viewer mail clown. It is the policy of this network to allow those with opposing viewpoints to air their opinions and voice their grievances in compliance with the National Association of Broadcasters Code of Ethics and Fair Practice and the FCC's equal time rules. We maintain this forum for rebuttal. Hey, you little weasel. Bite me. <laughs> the opinions and ideas expressed in this rebuttal are not necessarily those of this network. This, by the way, is kind of a sad note. Tonight is the last time we'll ever be able to say bite me on this show. Really? No, we had a big, a big discussion with the legal department, and this is absolutely the last time, right? This is uh, their ironclad, no more bite me deal, and we have but to play they along. They gave us one, though, tonight. Tonight was the last time you'll ever hear bite me on this show. So we really better take advantage of yeah, this They one wanted to last. crack down on this whole okay. bite me thing that's going on. Well, if I may say, Dave, may I? If sure, I please do. Bite me. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> oh, I can hear them big blue jumping already. Yeah. Tomorrow, out there. The island. In, yeah, 40 That's miles right. off the coast of Montauk. Probably be loons out there. They snap, too. Those big, come out of the water and snap those blue, like that. Sometimes they can actually butt against the boat. Exactly. Oh, that's why it's a Crack the whole boat in half. Sport. Yeah. <laughs> Letter number five. Dear Dave, have you and Paul ever vied for the affections of the same woman? If so, who won? Wondering Brad Finn, Sunderland, Mass. Would that be Mass or Maine? M-A is Massachusetts? M-E is Maine. M.E. is Maine, Massachusetts, perhaps. Well, uh, yes, Brad, actually, it did happen once. Uh, Paul and I did kind of uh, run into some problems that way. Luckily, it's now all on videotape, uh, so we can look at it whenever we want to and pretend it's an actual memory. You see, I had received a photograph from a viewer in the mail. You know, I've never gone out with a viewer before, but hey, it's better than another night watching VH1. Hey, Dave. Oh, hi, Paul. What are you doing here? Uh, well, I guess it's obvious. Uh, I tell you what, let's just ring the bell and, and uh, see who she wants. What the heck? Fine by me? Okay. Yes, who's there? Oh! 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 And so police have finally captured the good-looking, extremely large woman who robbed a 7-Eleven convenience store earlier this evening. Wow, Dave, not only was she 50 feet tall, it turns out she's also a dangerous robber. Yeah, yeah, Paul, I think we've learned a valuable lesson from all of this. What's that, Dave? Never, never go out with someone based solely on a photograph. She could be enormous and also a criminal. <laughs> Why are you in trouble? Well, I had three or four very funny anecdotes, but they all contain the phrase, bite me. Oh, no. So yeah, you can't no, say that yeah, anymore. That's out. Now, this all is right. the end of a long, right. arduous, well, hard-fought battle. Far for me to cause trouble. How you doing? Good. I'm well. Uh, this is amazing, isn't it? This game show has yeah. become so unbelievably popular, not, not only in this country, but I understand different versions of it around the world. Yeah, there, there's a French Wheel of Fortune. There's a French guy. I don't know what his name is. There's a French Vanna. The guy uses French hairspray. He's got French... Game show teeth. Yeah. You know, he's very good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all over all over the world. Have you seen any of those? No. Yeah. No, I don't even watch ours. Well, no, because because you've seen it once. Do you go sure. home and watch your show? No. Oh, no. There you go. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> also interesting, it was pointed out because of I guess now the success of this movie, Good Morning Vietnam, that you too 
uh, I guess, worked in, in, uh, yeah. in radio. I, in, uh, in, so I was a fighting disc jockey in uh, Saigon. I was... Um, Were you before or after or Adrian, during? Adrian Cronauer, Cronauer. Was, was the uh, person on whom the uh, movie is based, and I followed him. I was there in 68, uh, 69. Now, Robin Williams is much better than either Adrian or I was. I mean, if we were as good as Robin, we'd be doing HBO specials, you know, yeah. but, we, <laughs> but we're not. Uh, but uh, you could not be as anti-authoritarian and wild in the air as Robin, yeah. you know, because they can put you in jail in yeah. the army, you know, and I, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, you had to be a little more uh, sneaky mm -hmm. to get around there. Uh, for, for example, we had a guy who was in charge of our station who he was he was a, he had the, he had never been inside a radio station but he had the right rank so they made him in charge of the station and kind of like NBC kind of, it's the same <laughs> yeah in fact the guy works for GE now oddly enough is that right yeah he's yeah, gone I, know. Yeah. Uh, I forget his name but in any event he he liked Christmas music now I like Christmas music too how can you not like Christmas but music? I like it if you're like me you like it around what Christmas right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, more or less but he liked it in October and he would say you know I, I'm, I'm in the Christmas mood why don't you play every third record of Christmas right now we were a rock and roll radio station and and the guys were in a war zone anyway and don't need to be reminded that Christmas is coming sure. but you can't say I won't play your lousy records because you can go to Leavenworth for not playing Jingle Bells and to me that's not yeah. worth it yeah. so what yeah. what we ended up doing you would pretend you were playing Christmas music. If they heard, <laughs> if they heard something referring to Christmas, they would think you played it. I would say, like, uh, uh, and now, uh, for a visit with Santa Claus, Led Zeppelin will climb that stairway to heaven, you know? And he'd say, Christmas, great. And, uh, so you had to be that way. That's you funny. Yeah. And how long were you on the air there? A year and a half. Yeah. Entered, and they never, the enemy never got an album. Now, uh, <laughs> well, congratulations. When, now, when you went into the service, how did you get that gig? Because that seems like a, a pretty desirable well, thing. It, it, it was dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, were you a, a civilian disc jockey? Yeah, I, yeah, I was a disc jockey. Where'd you and, work? Uh, in small towns. I worked uh, in, in the suburbs of Chicago. I worked in a little town called Murray, Kentucky, and, yeah. and bounced around. But they, uh, uh, I was lucky enough to get that. You're right. It was very soft duty, which is, uh, yeah. which was good. Tell me about the uh, the show. I see the show. Uh, it's on NBC during the day. Yeah. Wheel of Fortune. And uh, and then it's syndicated, I guess, at about 7:30 at night, and then other hours of the day mm -hmm. on different mm -hmm. stations. It's, here every, it's on virtually every hour of the day. Is that right? <laughs> every amazing. somewhere in the world. How much money has this thing, this one little half hour of uh, game show, generated? I, I don't know. Millions. Take a guess. Uh, more than millions, like a half a billion, maybe. Probably, right? yeah. yeah. I'd say a half a billion, 480 million dollars. Isn't that stunning? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, and, and Merv Griffin gets all of that, doesn't Pretty he? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, That's the yeah. sad part of this yeah. whole story. <laughs> that Merv Griffin gets it all. Well, he does, but he, uh, he, yeah, well, he deserves it. He worked hard. He came up with the concept yeah. in a dream one night. Really? Is that well, what came I think so. He, well, oh. he had something bad to eat and woke up and uh, said, we'll have a woman, she'll turn letters, and we'll give away lawn furniture. The rest is... Tell me about... Um... <laughs> the rest is history. Uh, tell me about the... Uh, uh, when the puzzles come up, uh, sometimes people... I never know what the puzzles are, but no. I, I, I'm no good at that game. No. Uh, do people on the show... I mean, are they ever just wildly solvable and they just go right well, they, they Eventually they solve them because yeah. all the letters are up and if they can read the words, uh, they'll, they'll get them on there. So they almost never go unsolved. But they, um, they can be more difficult. Than yeah. I mean, we, we, had, we had a puzzle, E.G. Marshall, fine actor. Mm -hmm. You know E.G.? Sure. You probably bowl with E.G. as I do. And, uh, but the people on our panel did not know E.G. Marshall. We had E blank Marshall up there. <laughs> and the rest of the half hour was people just guessing letters to try to put. We had E.Z. Marshall, E.F. Marshall. It was, we finally got to G. You know? Never got anywhere. What, what about the little, uh, the little uh, you have, I don't know what you call them exactly, common phrases. Yeah, um, uh, yeah we... Uh, you have two we, categories, I, phrases or... Or uh, pharmaceutical products. That would be uh, <laughs> something like that. Notions. <laughs> no, <yeah>. Notions. <laughs> so what are the phrases? Well, we have, you have easy ones, but mm -hmm. again, the people are under a lot of pressure. Oh, exactly, you know, and sure. there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot we of have, merchandise. We had, we had a woman solve a puzzle once. It was, it was just about up there, and she solved it. She said, I'd like to solve it. It's very clear. It's more fun than a barrel of Vikings. Is the way she, <laughs> she was wrong. It's an uh, old Norse <laughs> phrase, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, all right, let's do a... Uh, Pat Sajak uh, obviously is here, and... Um, well, what was... Talk about Vanna a little bit. Sure. I rarely get an opportunity to do that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, how is she these days? Good? She's well. You've yeah. had her on the show. Been She's on the a show delightful a couple of times. woman. Yeah. Very nice, um, very nice woman. And, and uh, when she comes on show, sometimes she'll get people who think she's going to be an easy target and you can have fun with her, but she has a great sense of humor. Yeah. And she, she understands 
understands what she's doing there. Uh, again, this is an adjunct phenomenon of that program. It is an adjunct phenomenon. That's, <laughs> no, I have no idea what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> is this the adjunct uh, phenomenon yeah. segment? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, that the show would be so popular, yeah. and that yet she alone has generated an it's, enormous it's, popularity. She has, a, she has a clothing line. Oh, uh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Vanna White dental floss is going to be out very soon. <laughs> Waxed and unwaxed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. She has a lot going for her. And, and the story, uh, perhaps apocryphal, maybe you can clear this up for us, is that she was selected for the gig because she has an enormous head. <laughs> Now, I've heard you say that. No, no, I... You said that. I've heard you say no, that. No, 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 no. I've never said that. I've ne Let me explain. Merv Griffin, the aforementioned Mr. Griffin, mm -hmm. has what we have come to call the big head theory. <laughs> now, Merv has said this in interviews. He believes that, that people who are very popular in the past in movies, Joan Crawford, in present in television, Vanna White, are, pop are popular because... <laughs> Because they have big heads uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, and big faces and big features, uh -huh. big eyes, big cheeks, right. a big, a big people, mouth. People want this. People. They want to see big, abnormally sized <laughs> people. And Murr's, Murr's been very, very successful with his big, big head, head theory. theory. Yeah. I see. I see. Oh. Didn't Carl Sagan have a similar theory <laughs> about... Um, and so what did he, he brings the, the women come in and he gets out his Little calipers. And <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and that's basically how you do it. And uh, I don't think hair counts. Yeah, actually. yeah. Now let's talk about this other thing that's been in the newspapers, What's that? I guess, the last couple of days, about your ongoing negotiations with CBS to do another project. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Well, is that, tell us uh, yeah. what the project might well, be. Well, is well, it true? Talking, is it something you're yeah, interested in? It's something they're talking about. We're, we're talking about doing a late night talk show. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Just exactly how late, Pat? <laughs> well, you know, when, when Jack Parr left The Tonight Show, people said it'll go in the toilet, you know, uh, who, no one can replace him. And, of course, Johnny Carson came along. Right. It's the same thing at CBS. They're saying, who can replace Adderley in Night Heat? <laughs> so, so, so it's the, same, it's the same kind of thing. No, well, it would be, you know, 1130-ish if it happens. We're, we're talking. My people are talking to their people. They're taking lunches, having meetings. Yeah, I know, but you understand something. If you go up, and, uh, and this is certainly nothing new to no. you, you, many people, the road, the television path is strewn with the bodies of people who have tried to go up against Mr. Carson. Yeah. Well, you can't worry about it. I mean, uh, he will not lose any sleep over it. And, and uh, Well, no, I'm not saying he's I, I, worried. No. no. Yeah. You, you I, misunderstand, I, Pat. I don't, oh. I don't think he's worried at all. Oh, I thought you thought he'd be concerned. <laughs> no. no. I was about to try to put him at ease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I understand, but what are you going to do? You can't, you can't operate like that. You, if you want to do something, you do it. And, and well, you're you nuts. You'll never work again if this goes under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just try and, back, yeah, try and get back on the little game show then. If you... I'll still, I'll always, I'll, you know, game Your show Your head ain't big enough to come back on that show. <laughs> game? <laughs> I'm surprised you've had that job as long as you've had it. You know, but when I, when I sit and watch you on, on nights where things are really going well and the oh, audience is, God. I've seen some of those, yeah. and, and I say, boy, what a, <laughs> seen a couple, what, haven't you? What a great way to make a living. But then when, I, when there are those <laughs> nights, about four minutes into it, uh -huh. where, the, where this look comes that says, I've died, I'm in yeah. hell, and the That's show right. will never end, That's right. uh, <laughs> I wonder why I would, would be interested. But it, it may have. Yeah, but, but I mean, it seems obvious that after the enormous success of this, your yeah. Wheel of Fortune, that you might want to go on to sure, something else. Sure, sure. I think you'd be great at it, The too. nice thing about being a game show host is you you can always do that I mean it's, it's a great uh, hold card it really mm -hmm. is and it's yeah. a it's a fine way to make a living and they're like big game shows like baseball managers I mean they may be fired by one team but they'll be Pick hired by another one. so yeah but but this has been wildly yeah, successful really I mean and in I, the history of television and I and I owe my life to yeah. it and Merv and and my head <laughs> uh, good to see you again Pat. You too, Dave. thanks for stopping by it's a rerun what do you care <laughs> you, you want to come and sit in an empty studio Monday fine show up there's no show here what's the matter with these people you know, man has always wanted to know the future to control his financial fortunes, his personal life, or just to know the next time Hard Bodies will be on HBO. <clears throat> so last week I decided to look into my own future with the help of some of New York's finest fortune tellers. Join me now, won't you? Hello and welcome. This uh, woman to my right is Reverend Mitchell. Reverend Mitchell, thank you for having us. How would you describe yourself? I'm a psychic reader. Mm -hmm. I've been in the business since... 25 years. The psychic business? Uh, yes, I yeah. do all types of readings. If I ask you to contact my Uncle Earl, could you do that? No, I don't. Yeah. No. 
Well, he's not dead or anything. It'd just be a matter of placing a call. I would like to read your face. All right, fine. I see through your face you have good character, a good sense of humor. Well, thank you very much. But I see a lot of stubbornness. Stubbornness? And your stubbornness caused you a great deal of disappointment in the past. Yeah. My life has been nothing if not one disappointment after another. No, not so bad. Oh, but on the other hand, it hasn't been all that bad. All right, we have some, uh, we have some uh, Xerox copies of other people's uh, palms. This is uh, Brant Gumbel's hand. What do you see there? Financial difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, hit me. No, no, leave Take it here. Beware of a lawyer. Be careful what you oh, find. Gee, that's not exactly a bulletin, is it? Do you, do you, do you get anything that would uh, indicate to you that I'm going to be surrounded by babes? A lot of honey. A lot of honey? You know, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean when I say that, don't you? You understand what I'm talking about? I don't see a lot of honeys around you, oh, but I do see you trapped with two women. D oh, jeez. No, there'll be now, two see, women I've in your life. I've had dreams like this. What do you call yourself, Tina? Are you a psychic? Are you a reader? What, what are you? I read tarot cards. Tarot I cards? I read palm readings. Uh -huh. Have you ever worked with Kreskin? Three packages of cards. Are you past, present, future? Which one do you want? Past? Let's go right to the future. All righty. Boy, look at the big stack of future cards. Yeah. Pull one card, any card you want. Ah, wow. Oh, jeez. This is the worst possible <laughs> thing that could have happened. That's the worst card you could have had. Oh, well, thanks a lot. How many dead cards are in there? Uh, there's only one dead card. Well, of course. Only one dead card. Yeah, out of out of a deck of a thousand. Oh, I can't go on. All right, thanks, Tina. You're welcome. Is that your real name, Madam Rosa? Yes. You didn't just come with the franchise? Show me your right hand. In your childhood, it shows that you had, you felt at times that you was living in two worlds. That's right. You know why? I was raised by poodles. <laughs> That's the truth. Who are those women out there, by the way? Neighbors. I'll get rid of them. Hey. Excuse me. Just keep it moving. Just, come on. Get it. Just hit the world, will you? No, seriously. Back up and ride. Okay, Peter, let's, let's work with this now. Put your hands on this. I'm not... Put your hands on there. Yeah. All right. Now, what are we getting here? What do you want to get out of it? I don't know. Isn't this part of it? No. What is this? This is a lamp. Oh. <laughs> was you married? Mm-hmm. I was married once for 10 years. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> I think you about got gin there. <laughs> these again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Make that noise with me. Looking forward to this. I think this will be exciting. We've got a lot of folks here. Our next guest is a talented composer, musician, and performer. This man was one of the founders of the legendary New York Dolls. Uh, he had a successful solo career, of course, as David Johansson. And this is his brand new hit album right here entitled Buster Poindexter, folks. Please welcome the one and the same Buster Poindexter. <laughs> Easy. Nice to see you. Very nice job. Yeah, Have yeah. a seat there. Oh. You know, I, I need to apologize to you in advance here. We're desperately short on time, but I did want to find out what you're doing in, in addition to uh, having fun with your brand new hit album. Well, I'm making a movie in Hollywood with Bill Murray called Scrooge. He's making another movie. He, he makes is, one yes. each decade, doesn't he? Well, at those pri the price he gets, I, would, I don't blame <laughs> yeah, him. I, I mean, guess so. Know. And what do you play in the film? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah. When is this coming out? Next Christmas. Great. You Thanksgiving, something. Yeah, I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, nice to see you. It's great to be here. You sound terrific, and my thanks to the horns. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And and the lovely woman singing with you. Susie Tyrell. Susie, nice to see you. All right. Uh, 
We got to do a uh, Our guest is a rookie running back from the Washington Redskins. Here he is in action as a last minute replacement in Sunday's Super Bowl. This man scored two touchdowns and rushed for a record 204 yards. Folks, please welcome the amazing Timmy Smith. Timmy. Hey! Timmy, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you for coming here. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Is, is this one of those stories that you dream about when you're a kid? Uh, you weren't in, as a regular, you weren't a starter during the regular season, and then the big game, the biggest of your life, as you're going out onto the field, you find out you're going to play? Boy, I think that yeah, was a... Or start, I guess. You started the game, right? When I got the word from the coach, I almost had a fit, you know, almost fainted. When did you find out? I found out when everybody was walking out on the field, the coach had, had a plan that, that he's going to introduce George Rogers then. Mm -hmm. You know, and George told me to have a good game, and I was going, wait a minute, I'm a start or what? Yeah. And I, the coach said, uh, they're going to introduce George, and they're going to let me start. So that was a pretty shocker to me. Yeah. Did, were you surprised that you were able to perform as well uh, as, as you did? I mean, uh, certainly you're a talented athlete, but to just uh, set a record for rushing in the Super Bowl, that's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? Well, I think I was pretty fired up about this situation because I... You know, you you sit out you sit out uh, most of the season, and you finally get to start in the Super Bowl. You know, your blood just fl flowing. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it could have gone the other way. You could have stumbled and fallen and not done very well at all. But you're a hero. You, I mean, doesn't that tell you something exciting about yourself? You rose to the occasion. Well, I accidentally scored twice. You accidentally scored <laughs> twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did Did you play football as a kid all all your life? This has been your sport. Well, basically, I'm from a basketball school and. Town, the whole whole town of Hobbs, New Mexico, is basketball. So Where is it, Har Harvey? Hobbs, 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 Mexico. Hobbs, New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah. Yeah, I decided to switch over to football because uh, every day, you know, a basketball coach he loves for his players to run two miles every day. I yeah. said, you know, I can't take all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, going to something easy where you only play one game a year, not a bad gig. You right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now explain to me uh, in the end zone. Uh, I guess it's a dance. You're right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that vote of confidence. I try to do something different than other. What, athletes. what is it? And and how did you? Where does it come from? Uh, well, uh, the dance is called a uh, cabbage patch. The cabbage patch. Yeah. So you spin the ball and try to do the cabbage patch. And all right, you can know. you do a little of that for us now? Oh yeah. Because I noticed. I noticed it, you're playing on grass there in San Diego, and I noticed after you scored the first time, you threw the ball like you're throwing dice, and the thing comes up on its point and spins. Oh, right? This is pretty simple. All right, well, what do you want to start with first? Let's start with, we'll do the whole thing, just as if you had scored. If I can get a couple of beats over there, I can... A couple of beats. A couple of beats for Mr. Smith, please. I'll be right here if you need me. If you need any blocking, I'm right here. I mean, I can do the dance. Just show me how you do the ball. Well, you put your hand over God. the top. <laughs> if I lived to be 112, I couldn't do that. Try the ball. Well, you put the put put your hand over the top. Uh huh. Now I can do I can do it. I can cheat it. I can do it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I'm gonna go nuts now and dance. <laughs> All right, now let me. Show you. All right, now, just like this? Yeah. Now, do you drop it or just put it on? Just, yeah. No. All right, one more time. All right. Yeah. You know, I, I... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, I know. Why don't, why don't you come back to the show Monday night? You know, I do that, but a few years ago, I, I hurt my neck. Uh, Timmy, congratulations. Have a great off-season. We'll look for you next year. Thank you very much for being here. Also